Calculus, originally called Calculus of Infinitesimals, is the mathematical study of continuous change. There are two major branches of calculus. Differential calculus deals with the rates of change and slopes of curves, and integral calculus deals with the accumulation of quantities in areas under or between curves. Calculus was originally called Calculus of Infinitesimals because it utilized the concept of extremely small things or infinitesimals to approximate the calculation of the value of larger things, and the smaller the infinitesimal, the more accurate the calculation. When the history of infinitesimals is studied, the Greek mathematician Archimedes is credited with the first rigorous definition of infinitesimals. However, the ancient Africans in Egypt had the conceptual framework to denote infinitesimals in their Medunetta hieroglyphic numbering system. The ancient Egyptians had symbols for the numbers for 1 through 10, 100, 1000, 10,000, 100,000, and the symbol for 1 million was the ancient Egyptian Netur god He, who also represented infinity. Ancient Egyptian fractions were denoted by placing the number under the mouth symbol, Rho, Gardner sign list D21, so one half would be written as Rho over 2, one tenth would be written as Rho over 10, one hundredth would be written as Rho over 100, and one over infinity, or an infinitesimal, could be written as Rho over the Netur god He. When the history of calculus is studied, credit is usually given to the English mathematician Isaac Newton and the German mathematician Gottfried Leibniz of the 17th century as the inventors of calculus. However, Indian mathematicians developed methods for differential calculus hundreds of years before Newton and Leibniz in the 14th century, and Arab Muslim mathematicians developed methods of integral calculus centuries earlier in the 10th century during the Islamic Golden Age. However, the earliest evidence of calculus can be found with the ancient Africans in Egypt. This evidence is found on an artifact known as the Egyptian Moscow Mathematical Papyrus, so-called because it was an Egyptian mathematical papyrus acquired by a Russian Egyptologist who displayed it in a museum in Moscow, Russia. However, the papyrus was acquired in the city of Thebes, which the ancient Egyptians referred to as Waset. So for the remainder of this video, the papyrus will be referred to as the Waset Mathematical Papyrus. The Waset Mathematical Papyrus is dated to the ancient Egyptian 12th or 13th dynasty around 1850 BC. The Waset Mathematical Papyrus contains several algebraic word problems and two geometry problems. The second geometry problem of the Waset Mathematical Papyrus is problem 14, which describes the correct method of calculating the volume of a frustrum of a truncated square pyramid. The translation of problem 14 states, if you are told to find the volume of a truncated pyramid of six for the vertical height by four on the base, and by 2 on the top, you are to square the 4, result 16. You are to double 4, result 8. You are to square this 2, result 4. You are to add the 16 and the 8 and the 4, result 28. You are to take one third of 6, result 2. You are to take 28 twice, result 56. See, it is 56. You will find it is correct. Problem 14 of the Waset Mathematical Papyrus shows that the ancient Egyptians in Africa knew the correct formula for calculating the volume of the frustrum of a truncated pyramid. However, the derivation of this formula depends on the methods of integral calculus. Many scholars have written papers about Problem 14 of the Egyptian Moscow Mathematical Papyrus, some arguing that it is evidence that the ancient Egyptians had knowledge of calculus and other proposing alternative methods of how the ancient Egyptians could have derived this formula without integral calculus. So this is the frustum of a truncated square pyramid described in problem 14 of the Waset Mathematical Papyrus. The height is 6, the bottom square base has size of length 4, the top square has size of length 2. So the volume can be solved using integral calculus if we imagine an infinitesimally thin cross section, shown here colored in red. The volume of the entire frustum of the truncated square pyramid can be calculated as the accumulation of the volumes of all the infinitesimally thin cross sections from the bottom to the top. The volume of the infinitesimally thin cross section with length x in terms of y would be x squared dy, and the volume of the frustum of the truncated square pyramid can be written as the integral from 0 to the height of the pyramid x squared dy. As we can see, as the infinitesimally thin cross section travels from the bottom to the top, that there is a uniform rate of change. That uniform rate of change can be written as b minus a over h, where b is the length of the bottom side, and a is the length of the top side, and h is the height. As the cross section changes from the bottom to the top, x can be written in terms of y as b minus the rate of change, which is b minus a over h, all times y. Substituting this value for x, the integral for the volume of the pyramid can be written as 
the integral from 0 to h, b minus the rate of change, b minus a over h times y, all squared, dy. Plugging into the values for a, b, and h, we get the integral from 0 to 6 of 4 minus 4 minus 2 over 6 times y, all squared, dy which simplifies to the integral from 0 to 6 of 4 minus y over 3 all squared dy. Then we use FOIL, first, outer, inner, last, to square the inner term, and we get the integral from 0 to 6 of 4 minus y over 3 times 4 minus y over 3 dy, which can be written as the integral from 0 to 6 of 16 minus 4y over 3 minus 4y over 3 plus y squared over 9 dy which simplifies to the integral from 0 to 6 of 16 minus 8 over y over 3 plus y squared over 9 dy. Then solving the antiderivative for this definite integral we get 16y minus 8y squared over 6 plus y cubed over 27 evaluated from 0 to 6. Then plugging in the limits of integration we get 16 times 6 minus 8 times 6 squared over 6 plus 6 cubed over 27 minus 16 times 0 minus 8 times 0 squared over 6 plus 0 cubed over 27 which simplifies to 16 times 6 is 96 8 times 6 squared over 6 is 8 times 6 which is 48 6 cubed is 216 that's divided by 27 all the terms uh, with 0 basically go to 0 and then we have 96 minus 48 plus 8, which is 56, which is the same value that the ancient Egyptians had on the Waset mathematical papyrus in problem 14. And this is why there is debate about whether or not the ancient Egyptians had knowledge of how to use integral calculus of infinitesimals.